Okay, thank you for okay. for this uh, opportunity. Uh, well, my paper actually uh, well is uh, analyzes works of two um, contemporary authors from South Asian diaspora, uh, namely Jumpa Lahiri and Anita Rao Badami. Uh, I have chosen these particular authors because, um, well, they belong to the same generation and both of them, uh, I mean, they live in uh, Western spaces. The difference being, of course, that uh, Jumpa Lahiri was born in England and um, then uh, the family relocated to the United States while Anita Rao Badami uh, left India, well, uh, uh, in 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 the early 90s and so then she was born in india and then uh, she was exposed to canada so then they they live in um so i tried this uh, comparative uh, perspective uh, considering that i mean uh, their works uh, i have a list of their works here um you know, deal with similar topics mainly with the indian characters uh, um, that move to the west and the cultural dilemmas they experience uh, so the, for this particular presentation i will focus mainly on uh, um, uh, Tamarin Mem, Anita Robadami's novel Tamarin Mem, and Jumpalahiri's The Lowland, uh, with a few references to uh, um, Badami's Tell It to the Trees, uh, which is another novel. Uh, and well, um, well, the the approach is uh, mixing the, it combining a literary study approach with a cultural studies one and uh, the question being I mean I'm trying to to see whether um, in in the eastern western interaction uh, portrayed uh, described by these uh, novelists um, what kind of cultural transfers uh, are operated if at all uh, can we talk about synthesis or especially with reference to a model of female identities hindu models of female female identities because uh, i mean both authors um, deal mainly with uh, hindu community i mean characters from the hindu background but not only uh, but for this particular presentation the the, the women characters uh, come from hindu backgrounds um, so these are the, the covers of the two novels. Um, so in my analysis, um, I mean, it relies uh, on gender theories, on uh, well, the relation between nomadism, mobility, and uh, the possibility of empowerment, um, uh, referring to, to patterns of transgression and transculturality, and considering the main difference, actually, the main tension between uh, Western individualistic models and the South Asian um, more interdependent models of uh, identity on the background of uh, transnational uh, connectivity and migration that is common to both. Um, authors um, of yes so um, well I want to insist uh, briefly mention on the plot of the two novels so the lowland deals with I mean takes place in in the late 60s in in Kolkata uh, and is um, when the Naxalite movement uh, well uh, Took part. I mean, was manifested in uh, in Western uh, in in Bengal, uh, and uh, well, the protagonists are two brothers, Subash and Udayan. Udayan is uh, involved in uh, the Naxalite movement, uh, while his brother Subash chooses to to leave India and uh, pursue academic studies in the United States. Well, um, Udayan dies uh, because of his involvement in the guerrilla activities. Uh, well, he's finally killed, and uh, his young wife Gori well becomes. A widow and she's already pregnant and um, uh, it is Udayan's brother Subash that proposes to marry her and then bring her to, to the United States so this would be uh, like a very brief description of the plot uh, and well in, in America she gives birth to, to a young daughter Bella and uh, but the Gori finally decides to leave this new family and uh, move to California dedicating herself to an academic um, career. Uh, so what I found actually quite, uh, let's say, um, surprising or maybe um, a, a different tonality in Lahiri here is uh, the way in which uh, the novel abounds in, in transgression, what I call the transgressions. And uh, for example, we have the first one, which is uh, Gori, Gori's marriage to her brother-in-law after her husband's death. So, um, and uh, initially her um, love marriage to Udayan that in a way contradicted the family's expectations. Then we have her marriage to her brother-in-law, which is another way of... Uh, somehow uh, violating uh, 
traditions. Uh, and then further or when she moves to the United States, uh, unlike most of Lahiri's uh, characters who experience migration and are uh, very much attached to their cultural inheritance, um, Gori chooses to um, relinquish a visible marker of ethnicity, for example, and she also uh, avoids the company of other Indian women, uh, as these quotes actually, well, show. Um, and then she cuts her hair, she, she, she no longer wears the sari, and, uh, well, she clearly wants to avoid being associated with the traditional community. And then when, when, uh, when her child is born, gradually we can feel that Gori feels somehow, um, let's say, not unfit, but uh, she doesn't feel comfortable in her motherhood role, and uh, she she is more and more um, attracted to the world of uh, academia, and sometimes she even uh, feels, uh, I mean, she needs to get out of the house, leaving the child unattended, and uh, having short walks um, in the campus where her, her husband uh, works, and well, she finally attends, she starts attending uh, secretly attending um, a philosophy classes and then well she becomes fully enrolled in uh, in classes and uh, ends up being very passionate about philosophy uh, to the point when she actually decides that the best thing for her is to leave uh, her daughter and uh, well, her husband, uh, while they are away in India, she chooses to, to move to California and uh, there um, she becomes, uh, well, uh, she completely, I mean, fully um, emerging her new academic career. Uh, at the same time, I mean, I interpret her, uh, the act of leaving her family, uh, I think, expresses in a way a triumph of individualistic values in the sense that uh, uh, Gori wants to um, severe her, the ties with her past, uh, that uh, reminder of her traumatic uh, witnessing of her husband's execution in India. Uh, so um, I think in order to survive, she, she chooses this path uh, and to the point where she becomes, uh, as, as, she, as this quotation shows, she becomes completely uh, dependent on the idea of being isolated. So she, she, she wants to be alone. And um, I think, yes, in a way, we, we are dealing here with a hyper individualized model of, of identity. Um, and uh, at this point, maybe it is interesting to, to mention the fact that in uh, um, Anita Roo Badami's novel, Tell It to the Trees, we also have uh, a wife and a mother who decides to leave her house, her home, um, Hirani Gupta. Uh, but the thing is that she, she dies in a car accident on the exact day, so while leaving her home. So I think in a way, we could say that, uh, that her transgression is actually severely punished in this case. I mean, the decision to, to overthrow or the traditional values. Uh, at some point, uh, coming back to the lowland, Lahiri um, still we, 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 Lahiri presents Gori in a kind of crisis where she think of thinks of committing suicide, and I think here the idea be, is that. Um, I think what the author wants to, to transmit is that the model, this model of uh, hyper individualism, is not. I mean, is flawed in the sense that it cannot fulfill um, the individual. Uh, and despite its uh, well, let's say being the dominant paradigm in the West, um, Gori's crisis suggests that still um, being. I mean, focusing only on on oneself is not. Uh, enough, let's say. Uh, moving on to Tamarin Mem, uh, uh, Anita Robadam is. Um, 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 this novel is actually a dialogue between uh, a daughter who lives in Cali an Indian daughter who lives in, Cali in in Canada, who has left India for higher education, and her mother Saroji, who is a widow at the time, and. Um, uh, well, the novel is a dialogue between their, in a way, uh, through transnational uh, means of communications, mainly letters and phone calls between the mother and the daughter. And the, uh, the novel is uh, made up of two parts. Uh, one part um, tells Saroji's story from her perspective, and, and the other part uh, uh, tells um, Saroji the, the mother's story from her daughter's perspective. Uh, and it is interesting to see how their perspective sometimes uh, intersects and 
and not. <laughs> uh, the tamarind symbolism is also interesting because uh, tamarind itself is um, well uh, a beneficial uh, beneficial for health and used in uh, in uh, Indian cuisine, but also considered inauspicious because uh, it also has this very sour taste. And I think uh, this ambivalence is also reflecting on the character. Tamarind mem is uh, actually the the nickname uh, the servants use for uh, Saroji uh, because of her let's say uh, being temperamental and uh, talking back to people i mean being a bit rebellious having this acid uh, tongue like the acidity of the tamarind um, and i think this ambivalent is, is important in relation to the female model and hindu traditions uh, the character keeps talking about the arranged marriage that caused um, that was not an unhappy i was was an unhappy uh, an unhappy circumstance for her uh, well she her marriage was kind of of, um, let's say um, a bit distant. I mean, there was this kind of um, cold relation between her and her husband. Um, and uh, another interesting element is the fact that so being married with uh, an, an, an engineer in uh, Indian railways um, caused the family relocation uh, through India. And so, in a, I mean, uh, <clears throat> placing Saroji and her family in, in a condition of mobility. Now, in, uh, in, in gender studies, mobility is usually associated with uh, female emancipation and uh, empowerment. But uh, Saroji, as a wife, she actually experiences this condition as imprisoning. And I I found this contrast in a way, I mean, um, unexpected, let's say. Uh, and she keeps, uh, well, talking about her life that uh, in, in these railway colonies that was unhappy and she felt, you know, she felt uh, bored sometimes and, uh, well, only dealing with her uh, wife and mother duties because she has two daughters. Uh, interestingly enough, as uh, so, uh, as she sometimes uses, relies on, because my colleagues talked about myths, so she also relies on mythology when, um, you know, educating her daughters uh, using the myth of Savitri and Satyavan. Uh, now Savitri, uh, well, who uh, saved her, her husband from Yama's uh, claws uh, through her um, to her clever uh, speech uh, and interestingly the mother chooses to um, teach her daughter uh, this I mean retranslating the myths through empowerment rather than emphasizing values of, of wifely devotion uh, just need uh, if you want something hard enough you can get it just need persistence that's all so this is uh, what the mother chooses to emphasize from this story that is also a story about wife loyalty we can also wife we can also read it like this um, and then again what I found interesting is another um, the way in which the author presents widowhood as a liberating condition although hindu scriptures um bit of dharma talk about uh, uh i mean widowhood as a condition that perpetuates female dependence on her family on on her family or or her husband's family and anthropologic studies uh, reveal that in, in some unfortunate situation in hindu widows end up sometimes living on charity or uh, near temples so uh, but in this in this novel we have um, uh, so Saroji uh, being alone in India because both her daughters are uh, in the west she chooses to travel through India to travel uh, interestingly um, following the husband's destination I mean the same itinerary that she, her family uh, had uh, when her husband was alive but this time she wants to do it on her own own. So then she travels alone, uh, alone, but not alone because she's uh, in on her journey. She meets uh, women. She travels in a in a women's in a ladies' compartment, and they tell stories about their lives, and especially Saroji tells stories about her youth, about love, about everything, and then they they comment upon it. So I think that the idea of sisterhood and of sharing and of telling one stories again points to possibilities of empowerment um, associated with the condition of the condition of of who that traditionally is not empowering um, and um, so well uh, I think well to draw a conclusion would be that uh, Lahiri well with the lowland Lahiri actually um, focuses very much on, trans on transgression as a um, as a process of uh, redefining oneself and uh, a risky one uh, but uh, and sometimes she also and, and she also criticizes the path of hyper individualism um, 
while Anita Rao Badami, I mean, our, her novels present usually, um, I mean, Hindu traditional women, uh, uh, mostly, I mean, um, with, in a more, uh, in a more moderate uh, transgression, if if we can say that, um, and and the strong transgressions are actually seem to be punished, as uh, we can also see in Tell It to the Trees. Um, but well, for for this particular paper, it would be and presentation, it would be too much. Um, the idea being that well, um, both of them uh, talk about this cultural transfers because uh, individualism, I mean, we cannot say that culture are pure individualistic or collectivistic. So, so both authors present possibilities of uh, moving beyond this strict uh, delineation. Thank you for your attention. Lena, thank you for a very nice presentation. It was interesting and quite insightful.